Is this a dream or reality? Or a dream within a dream of you dreaming you're watching Nickipedia? Who knows? All I know for sure is that this is Nickipedia, and today I'm making all of your dreams come true by answering some Nickipedia mail. <laughs> Jack writes us, Dear Nick, I was wondering, why do we dream? I obviously could have looked this up, but your videos make it more fun to learn. Right on, Jack. Obviously, Nickipedia takes learning very seriously. That's fun learning. We're just, we're so witty. So thank you for the question. Okay, so why do we dream of Leonardo DiCaprio? Well, because he's talented and dreamy and because we all know that there is room for him on that door. Rose, such a selfish. Current research points towards three theories as to what's going on. Theory one, absolutely nothing, nada, zippo. Dreams are just the brain reacting to biochemical changes and electrical impulses that take place while asleep. The mental equivalent to random channel surfing with no real relationship to conscious life. <laughs> yeah, right. Because if that was true, it means that the six-eyed washing machine that ate my mother's pet turtle before asking directions to this meeting I was running late for two days ago is not something I should be worried about. Man, my dreams are weird. I'm having that naked hot dog dream again, aren't I? Theory two. Dreams are a part of the memory consolidation process. Memory consolidation is how we learn. Literally, it's the process of moving those state capital names you crammed so hard for in elementary school from short-term working memory to long-term memory storage. And you can't do that while wow. you're awake. But why do we need to consolidate our memories? Think of it this way. Imagine your brain is a laptop and the memory is a photo collection from that recent awkward family vacation. 10 of them are still loaded on an SD card, another five are on a USB stick, and the rest are up in the cloud. Sure, we've got access to them, but wouldn't it be faster and more reliable to just copy them all to one place like a laptop hard drive? The answer is yes, and that's memory consolidation. In the brain, new memories are stored in both the neocortex and the hippocampus. Vastly different structures and mechanisms. One regulates the hippocampus, while the other computes the neocortex. Then they get merged into long-term pathways that are more efficient for the brain to get to. It's this multi-sourcing memory structure that explains why our recall of events is, well, so fuzzy. Have you ever been able to remember certain details about a person, but not their name? You can perfectly see their face, but for the life of you, you cannot remember their first name. One memory mechanism can stay engaged while the other checks out the buffet table. When your memory systems work together, you remember things clearly. But if one system is distracted, you may miss a detail. This multi-point approach to memory is actually a good thing. Because if one pathway doesn't work, the brain rewires in favor of the other. The final theory on dreaming we'll take a look at is related not to the brain, but to the mind. Have you ever had a dream that felt so real? Good, because this next part will be a lot easier to understand. The idea is that dreams are your mind talking to itself. Think about that. Your mind, you, talking to you. Theory three. Memory analysis. One of the theories about dreams is that to get anything useful out of our memory, your brain needs to process what it just saw. But it can't do that until you're asleep. Like the brain is so busy trying to keep you alive and away from hunger, drought, insects, Shredder, and Godzilla, it has to wait till you're asleep and then basically binge watch all of your memories to extract the experience from the raw data. Most importantly, it has to strip out all the emotional bits, but keep the record of the event intact. Otherwise, whenever you recall the time you got scared and peed your pants watching A Nightmare on Elm Street, you'd actually pee your pants again, because recalling the memory of the event would also recall the emotional state as well. Kind of interesting stuff, huh? It's like a, it's like a safety check. Shazam! Analyzing our past in a non-passionate way is the only way we can truly learn and improve ourselves. Oh man, my brain just blew my mind. Whoa. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. We have new videos every week. But you already knew that.